Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game between Bobby Fischer and Bent Larsen, but not from the 1971 uh, candidates match, uh, but uh, rather from 1958 uh, interzonal tournament in Portoroz. It's one of their earliest games uh, where young Bobby Fischer has the white pieces and of course you all remember the 1958 Portoroz interzonal. We covered a couple of games uh, from it, we did not cover the entire tournament, uh, but before that we do have a, a photo challenge. So who is the chess player in the photo? Uh, a nice photo by David Lada, uh, also you might have seen her if you've checked out uh, uh, St. Louis live coverage, she was the official commentator along Yasser Saragon. Uh, so best of luck to everyone, and uh, here we also have, uh, as this game is a suggestion from a subscriber, a gentleman called The Brainless YouTuber. He says, uh, today 16th of August uh, is the 60th anniversary of a beautiful game between Bobby and Larson in the Porto Roger Interzonal. Bobby included it into his book, 60 Memorable Games. Hope you're reading this before you've decided what to do. Uh, as I did check the suggestions, I found this and okay, today is 17th, uh, at least where I live. Uh, but nevertheless, as 60, it's a 60th anniversary and also it's from 60, <laughs> my 60 Memorable Games. So I guess I definitely have to do it. Uh, and if any of you are wondering, we all already covered uh, Fisher versus Shervin in game one from his 60 memorable games. Uh, it's also the first game in, in the book. Uh, this is actually the second game in the book, so kind of funny that uh, worked out. Uh, and you all know, uh, you all remember the final standings of the 1958 Porto Roger Interzonal. Uh, if not, uh, here they are, just a glimpse of it, but we're gonna check it out after uh, as well. So, uh, E4 by Fisher, of course. Uh, c5, knight to f3, d6, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures and knight to f6. Uh, knight to c3 and we have g6 here. Uh, here they say that uh, even though uh, in those days the dragon variation of the Sicilian was one of black's greatest weapons to fight against e4, uh, a lot of attacks have been found for white and uh, uh, Bent Larsen ha was one of the last people who was using it on the highest level. Uh, they say that uh, like, even weaker players were beating grandmasters with the white pieces uh, if they went for the Dragon Sicilian because uh, the Yugoslav attack was very popular then and, uh, you know, it was simply too easy to play it. Uh, like Fisher says and like the title suggests, uh, open up the H file, uh, sack sack and mate. Uh, but let's see how the game went. Uh, bishop to e3, uh, bishop to g7, so still in the dragon variation, and now f3, the Yugoslav attack, preparing to push g4, h4 and whatnot. Uh, we have castles by Larsen, queen to d2, of course preparing this uh, bishop to h6 move if ever possible, uh, knight to c6 and now bishop to c4. Bishop to c4 is an excellent move, uh, before an older variation was ca uh, queenside castle, but uh, if you castled queenside you allow black to push d5 and you know if you allow black to push d5 uh, in the Sicilian uh, you've obviously not done uh, the best you could have. So Fisher here goes for bishop to c4, he doesn't allow d5. We have knight captures on d4, bishop captures on d4 and now bishop to e6. Uh, bishop to b3 by Fisher and now queen to a5. Uh, Fisher castles queenside uh, and here uh, while you could play bishop captures and c captures uh, it was a uh, it was kind of a known thing that uh, black doesn't really have all that much ideas here how to break through this pawn structure. And although the pawn structure is much better for black if you ever reach the end game, but uh, black never managed to reach the end game here. White would simply push g4, h4, h5, and simply win the game. So here Larson goes for a different idea. He plays b5, and okay, king b1 by Fisher. Now comes b4 uh, and knight to d5. Here we have bishop captures on d5. Knight captures on d5 isn't all that great because it uh, it uh, in the end uh, we will reach a better position for white. For example. Uh, bishop captures on g7, uh, knight to c3, as the knight will be lost on d5, so you might as well ruin uh, white's pawn structure a bit. Uh, b captures on c3, king captures on g7, and now c captures on b4, with an attack on the queen. Uh, queen moves, now comes queen d4 check. King moves, and now bishop captures on e6. Pawn captures, and you move the queen back. Uh, you are up a pawn, and you have an excellent game. Uh, so instead, after knight, uh, instead of knight captures, bishop captures was played. Uh, bishop captures, and here, 
uh, after the game, uh, Larson mentioned this position and he said that uh, he, he wanted to win this game. He was playing for a win in this game, uh, even though he saw that knight captures uh, on d5 was a force to draw. Uh, because after e captures, uh, queen captures, uh, for example, rook to e1, now queen captures uh, bishop on d4. There's no way to stop this. Queen captures, bishop captures, rook captures, and now the e7 pawn. Uh, and the, the b4 pawn are under attack, so you want to protect the b4 pawn, rook captures, and now rook to e8. Captures, captures, where black is now threatening rook to e1. Checkmate, king c1, and now after rook e2, the game continues, but the material is equal. This is this is a drawn endgame. Uh, so instead, as Taimanov did not want to draw, as uh, sorry Taimanov, <laughs> we already we had so many Taimanov games, I'm... Uh, constantly thinking Fisher is playing against Taimanov. Uh, Larson here mentions that he did not want this uh, draw variation that we mentioned, so instead he went rook to c8. And here Fisher says uh, he immediately went bishop to b3. He says, if you haven't taken my bishop now, uh, you will not have it. And now he says that he, he achieved so many easy victories with this setup, where he simply pushes g4, h4, h5, he sacks a piece and then checkmates his opponent. So let's see if this is true. Uh, uh, Larson wants to push uh, his a7 pawn uh, on, on the queen side, but to do this he has to move the queen, and also to move the queen he has to defend the pawn. So first rook to c7. Uh, Fisher starts his attack on the king side, h4. Queen b5 preparing to move the a pawn. Uh, h5, we have rook f to c8 doubling uh, on the c file, and now h captures on g6. h captures on g6 and the g4. Uh, Fisher prepares g5. Uh, we have a5, and now comes g5, attacking the knight. And here you don't have all that many options. You can go knight h5, knight e8. Uh, you can push a4. Pushing a4 doesn't work, uh, because you simply capture here. And after a captures, you can capture the bishop. And now after pawn captures on c2, this comes with check. It seems like it's an excellent move, but white has this beautiful queen captures on c2. And now there's really nothing to do. If you capture the queen, then rook to h8 is checkmate. Uh, and even if you don't capture the queen, if you play something like f6, still it will not help you. Queen h2, and then it's all over. Uh, another thing you could do after g5 is go knight e8. Knight e8 also isn't that great because of bishop captures. Knight captures, and then now rook to h6. Queen is coming to h2, then again, it's all over for black. Uh, so, time of try... Uh, Larson tries a knight to h5, but here comes uh, Fisher's main idea that he always mentions why you shouldn't play the Dragon Sicilian or the Pierce defense, uh, because g4, h4, h5, and then rook captures here, and it's all over, as Fisher says. Uh, g captures on h5 was played, and now g6, not wasting any time, the f7 pawn is pinned. Uh, e5 attacking the bishop, now bishop, uh, pawn captures on f7, king to f8, and now comes bishop to e3. Uh, d5, uh, we have e captures on d5, there's even time for that, rook to f7, and now comes d6, opening up an attack against uh, the rook on f7. Rook to f6, blocking, and now comes bishop to g5. Uh, queen to b7. Uh, okay, we have bishop captures on f6, bishop captures on f6, and here Fisher played d7, uh, but it's not the only way to go, uh, although white here does have a checkmate in 7 moves. Fisher goes for one line, but also a very beautiful line is queen to h6 check. Uh, not an easy one to find, because after queen blocks, you have this beautiful rook to g1 move. And now you cannot capture the rook, because the queen is pinned. Uh, if you do nothing, then rook captures queen is coming, and if you capture the queen here, then you get rook to g8, and this will be checkmate. Uh, but okay, after bishop to f6, uh, Fisher played d7 instead of queen to h6, uh, we have rook to d8, and now queen to d6 check, and it was in this position uh, that Bent Larsen resigned the game, as there is really nothing to do here. Uh, if you try bishop to e7 blocking, then queen to h6 will be checkmate. The pawn is guarding d8 square, uh, bishop guarding the, this entire light square diagonal. Uh, and uh, if instead after queen d6 you go king g7, it doesn't matter. Rook g1 check, king moves, you get uh, queen captures on f6, and now whatever you play to defend checkmate, you're still getting checkmated. Queen g6 check, king moves, queen, queen captures here, queen blocks, queen captures on e5, you have to block, and now queen captures on g7 will be checkmate again. So yeah, uh, queen d6, uh, it was in this position that uh, Bent Larsen resigned the game, but like he said, uh, in this uh, infamous f uh, position where bishop to d5 was played, he did not want to go for knight captures on d5. He said he saw the forced draw line, but 
as Fisher was still very young and uh, Bent Larson wanted to ensure his place in the 1959 candidates tournament, he wanted to go for a win here. Uh, like we said, these are the final standings. As you all know, Tal won this tournament with 13 and a half out of 20. Uh, after that, he of course qualified for the 1959, the legendary tournament, uh, which he won, and then of course went to fight Botvinnik. But you know, uh, as you can see here, uh, James uh, Bent Larson was not able to qualify. He had eight, eight, and, eight and a half out of 20, and Fisher Indian had 12 out of 20, along with Friedrich Olafsson. So yeah, uh, that's the game. A, a nice preparation for uh, our 1971 match between Fischer and Larsen, uh, which I'm uh, planning to start tomorrow. So I do hope you enjoyed this game, that you're enjoying the Fischer series so far. This is just an introduction. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marius Hector for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon uh, with the Bobby Fischer series. And... Uh, on a side note, if any of you are perhaps interested in Hearthstone, uh, I also create some Hearthstone content, so I will put a couple of links in the description below uh, in case you want to check that out as well. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.